Tuesday afternoon, about four o'clock, I think. Still banging the cars out, got five learner cars here. So this is like the learner shed here up to the ones what are a little bit older at the back, and then we've got the majority of the others running back. Got a colossal amount of cars on the milk at the moment, nearing 200, I reckon. So that's all, this is like the youngest shed, and we've probably got 95 in here, I think. It's a big days of carving are done now. We're down to like two or three a day, like four would be our biggest day. It's like not really going to get much bigger than that. And we got about 60, 63, I think it was, when I counted it about two days ago. So it's probably about 60 or just under 60. So it's going extremely well. This year has been a good year, like a real nice tight block. What's well, come kind of natural because we don't do no estimate or anything like that. No, um, to like bring the cycle on. It's just with organic, we're not allowed to do that. So it's literally just like, first of May, we've done um, two weeks of um, sex semen, and then after that, just uh, conventional AI, and then we whack the balls in, and then we pulled them out, I think it was like first of September, so a bit later than usual. But they've seen it all, I think the pool's wrapped up the last few, because we're, this is all balls, ball coming out now, ball calves, um, like ball uh, coming out of the balls, like balls calves. So um, yeah, no, it's tracking on all right. It's good weather for it too. Oh, a bit of fresh wind blowing through the shed today. So it's uh, great for cars. Here's me walking alongside the shed. Show you the ones at the back. So we've got pens of 15 here. These are still like um, between two and three weeks old. Um, we've got cake in the middle for them and we've got water at the back. And then the ones around the back are three weeks old plus and they, um, they're in like our makeshift straw sheds. And they, um, we get six litres in the morning and we don't feed them at night. But we go round there and we fill them up with water and give them cake at night. We don't do it throughout the day, so they still get up and run over. So this sort of uh, animal we're trying to breed out, really. We don't want too much today, but we have got a few about. As you can see, we want more black and white, but I say the majority of them are black and white now. So like this. See, black and white, like that's what we want. Still relatively small though, cats. So yeah, I have one dodgy one. Last week when it was just wet all week, I had a, like at least one a day dodgy one. But this one here, he was dodgy, and I'll just show you. He was pretty, I'd say he's pretty rough, but he has got over it quite well. Yeah, um, honestly, he's got a bit of skin, a bit of hair come off his ass. Where he, sh where he shit his ass out. Can't see it. Really. But um, there's one now. What's lost a little bit of weight because he got ill. And we've gone. Got a hard job there. I'm gonna show you something else in a minute. Right, we've gone from button tags and large plastic tags to metal tags. See those golden tags? They're a bit more expensive than that tag because we're um, this ground what we rent where we put all these calves in the summer. They keep like it's a lot of stock fencing, like sheep fencing and whatnot, and they rip their, they rip both tags out. What's a real pain in the ass, but they shouldn't rip that out. So um, there you go. See, it's quite a solid tag that is. And I went for them instead of uh, metal, like silver metal ones, because uh, we've got some cows back at home where you've got the metal tag and the numbers just wore off. But these, the numbers shouldn't wear off because that's like imprinted. So uh, there's one. See that? There you go. So we'll see how we get on with them. Toby at the moment, just doing a bit of straw and dine. Wednesday morning. Just chucking straw around everywhere. I've got loads of dry cows at the moment. I'm just letting them in. I'm on this door at the moment and I'm just letting them in the cattle. Usually we drive them around straight back, but we're just going to bed down everywhere today. Because we've got a lot of work on. We've got a new wagon coming on demo and we've got a new Merlot coming, so we're going to try these both out. Keenings have had a bit of damage to them and we've done a lot of repair. And the new Keenan is miles off. Like we ordered one up, but it's uh, like they keep putting it back all the time. So um, we're going to uh, look at something else, we'll try something else today. Like, okay? And we'll see how we get on. It gets pretty dusty in there. But we've got no sides on the shed, so it just all blows out. We've got Yorkshire boarding down that side just because the wind comes in that way, but the rest is just all open.
These are the silage bells, what we're giving the cows at the moment. Good stuff it is. It's got a lot of seed in it, but it's like, you know, healthy stuff. And you've seen a lot of taste of it. So we are getting a little bit low on clamp silage now across the board. So we're mixing all sorts in with the silage to string it out. Because it's early days, there's still a lot of winter to go for us. Definitely like really, you know, right up to May. Because it, this farm's really wet, so they could stay in like gone 15th of April quite often. And then the other farm's really dry, so we and it's organic, so we feed up there like May usually up there. So really we we do from like um middle of October or say first of October to May, so it's you know a lot of a year. Young stock here on the silage, so you really love it. Just waiting for Toby to come in with a bell straw and I'm gonna cut strings and he's gonna spread it all over here. Just gonna drive down this passageway and just sling it all over there. All right, Toby's just getting in track there. We've cut the strings. This is the barley bell six stringer. Packed in tight. There's a lot of straw in there. It's gonna straw this bit right up. I've just been sweeping out young stock. Our pit is loaded, so we're gonna haul a bit more of that up to our muck pile. Like we've got a big concrete muck pile up by sewage clamps. Empty this a bit. We've sucked 16 load of water out with a tanker. And that dropped it a lot, because we, we had a lot of rain. Again, this winter, they say on the news we haven't had a lot, but we've had a lot here. There he is, he's coming on down the barrier here. That is literally going to bed that right up. There's a lot of barley in one of those bells. We found a cow here. This bugger we chucked in with a bullet heifer as he keeps sucking cows out. He's got a mate while he's been sucking. I hate it when they do that. Get mass tight is bad. I think he's just sucking a one cow out there. He's going to carve himself, he's starting to bag up. You've got to go fairly slow on this straw because it's really wiry stuff. So he's going to trickle the bed in nice and slow. I think you can see the bed there. get on those beds because there's two chains either side in a bar going along is they do dis they do joint sometimes and then you've got to spend like an hour and a half trying to straighten it back out what's not easy so slow and steady great one there i bought down from the spring unit out of block we're going to put those two bells of silage down here in a minute and that'll sort them out for the rest of the day and probably half of tomorrow and then in a minute toby's going to go and get the wagon the demo wagon, what we're going to try out. Brother's got the Merlo up his place, what we're going to try out. And then we'll see how we get on. Got a lot of cows bagging up down here. We are up on a spring unit, it's about, I reckon we've got about 60 left. It's not many. And, there, and there's a lot bagging up now, so I reckon april we're not gonna have we're literally gonna have nothing we, we could probably cut it off because we we're gonna have more than enough cows up there but we are shut down with tv out there we've got one uh, we've got a test on the 3rd of april and if we have a clear test we go tv free and then we can send those out of blockers down there and then they can go with these and hopefully they'll be out in grain then and they can stay down there we'll pick out the ones we want to suit this system that orange one there is about borderline he is on this system you want no like no more crossbred than that but one like this too right all down you won't want it too much like you want to keep it fairly high yielded down there especially if you're using a wagon and keeping the cows in at night a lot So if one does open up a gate, 
I say you've got a puller in with a dry case, it's sometimes work a gate off its hinges. If they get out, then we've got another barrier of gates. There we go, there's a carving pen there. When we have a cow carved or a cow carved, then we put them in there and sort them out. Also our TV pen when we do TV testing. There we go, that's real fluffed up. That's ideal for dry coats, a bit of barley in there because uh, they're not soft on that. And that can help them out a little bit. They eat a bit of that as well as um, eating the soil, down the barrier here. You know what I said about blocking saw top, right? Well, here we go, he's blocked. It's a rotor what blocks up. The big rotor what spins around like that jams up with a flap. Usually when you stop it, you don't turn the bed off quick enough. Right, we're all done. There we go. It's clear, ready to go. Put the hatch back on. Never whack your arm in there, mine. Got a little bar area you're meant to use. Right, my truck's been in the garage for about two days, so I'm just going to pick that up in a moment. Jack in the back here. Teachers are on strike at the moment, so he's going to help me out in a minute. I've got to go and do a little project with a truck since I get it. Emma's going to give me out. Here we go, got my truck back. Here's Emma. Right, so this is what me and Emma have been doing in between farming. So we've took this back in hand the last couple of weeks. You know, it was in a bit of a state. So we're doing a fair bit of work. This is a, um, a flat. What we acquired probably about eight or nine years ago yeah. and it's been occupied up to then. Kitchen here, we had a workout at the kitchen because we had a leak behind, rendered the walls. So we've got a new kitchen going in at the moment. It should be a tidy job, I should have done it before and end but I'll show you when it's all done. So because it's a um, like a flat, and you've got to keep it fairly stylish and urban. So I wouldn't, you know, I chose a black kitchen, but I wouldn't go for black if it was me at my home. I'd go for like a cream or an oak worktop, but this is like fairly urban-y sort of style thing. And then you've got, because it's a flat, you've got to keep it basic. You've got to keep it simple because someone who's going to be coming in here is going to want to like live quite cheaply. But then they've also going to want, you know, it's got to look stylish. So that's why we're redoing the kitchen. Yeah, we found when we done the kitchen, we found a water leak behind, so we had to redo the units and whatnot. There's the old units here, pretty shafted. But once it's done, it's done, and then we got a decent investment. Redo carpets. This is all blue walls. Someone painted all this blue, so we put it back to white, white everywhere to bring as much light in as possible. And then we get some like grayish, lightish grey carpets in, new grayish vinyl. Just get as much light in as possible. Grey tiles, I reckon. Black units, black work top, and then black above there. And it gets us plenty of take all these lights out, these hanging lights, because it's all old fashioned, and put lights in like this. What we've got going in at the moment, these sort of lights. I'll just turn them on there. There you go, like that. See, takes up no space. It's on the side, it's more stylish than the hanging down one. We've removed the hanging down one, so that's going to look pretty smart. Yeah, and this should be some nice cheap accommodation for someone living, and it's all that together and whatnot. And that's what we're doing the other ones we've got. We'll go round. I think, like, yeah, like, if they stay rented out for long enough and it's um, spawned. But now and again, they do pop up, and it's usually this time of year someone decides to move when you get into, like, the spring. So now it's coming together well. It'd be good to get it wrapped up and done now and get someone in here. Living here myself. Doing some extensive work. Here's the bathroom. So all the tiles we took off, they fell off and they took half a wall with it. So we've had to re-render the wall. 
None of the work we've done ourselves has got to build us in. But just revamping it all up. Sink and whatnot. So what we were going to do is we were going to put it on the market, but what what we find is the town misses in. It's like a really popular town. You've got a railway station, you've got a few posh shops going in and whatnot. It's like really up and coming. And then looking at the rents of this place, it's gone like tenfold. So we'll probably rent it out and put someone new in, or we could put someone who works for us in there because it's a nice, like, tidy little place. So I was about, I reckon I was about two months shy of my 19th birthday when I first bought my first place. In the back then, there was this thing called self certified mortgages, what was spot on for someone who was a self employed belief maker like me. When you could literally say how much you were and then you bought a mortgage. So that's what I'd done. I went from there and went on. But obviously, the farm took over and then the property thing went sort of out the window. But now we're getting a bit older, a bit wiser. So we sort of know like, we can go from here, I reckon. L and P property maintenance are doing all the work for us. They're putting the kitchen in, they're pretty much doing everything, they've took everything in hand. What's um because you know with like a busy lifestyle with farming and whatnot. I ain't got no time. I've got no skill either doing stuff like this. If I had to fix it, it'd be like blue rope, hammer and nails, it toys, tech screws, stuff like that. So they've come in, they've they've done pretty much everything and decided like, you know, they choose the kitchen and whatnot, and I just said yes on there on the colour. So you're like highly recommendable, I know, they're a good lot.